and Joe Montana says, hey, you want to throw? I was like, me? <laughs>
and uh, taught school out there for, for a year, 94, 95, because uh, I had an degree. My wife was in PT school. She transferred from Marshall to Rockhurst College. So she was not PT school yet, I'm sorry. She was in undergrad biology, but she wanted to stay there so that way she'd have her opportunity because they had PT school there. So anyways, like we're going to make this our home. So she stayed there while I signed with the Packers and then, then had another injury, shattered my radius and then um, made the team and then shattered my race and you know then I got pretty much <laughs> cut but kind of a, like a box of pre-wrap or something you know past considerations or whatever because Ron Wolf the GM from from Green Bay was good friends with Bill Parcells at New England so I was in New England for four years after Green Bay for a year and then I got cut by coach Belichick which is you know everything happens for a reason and then Andy Reid was our tight end coach in Green Bay was now the head coach of the Eagles so then I signed with the Eagles at that time so had a lot of stuff that went on through the years but I, I just um, I was fortunate enough that I could snap the ball a little bit but you know I tell everybody you can do it too I put my shoes on just like you do you know if you want it go get it you might not have that talent where it's kicking punting that specialty thing that you, you know not everybody can do even if they try and try and try and try but some kids can maybe do it and that's I believe in that and and I think that's something that God put on my heart like okay when I had those adversities shattered my radius twice and blew my knee I'm you know, like okay well you have this God gave you this gift are you gonna work on it you know, like, are you going to work? I could throw a football because I was a decent kid in baseball and football, you know, and it's like, okay, well, you need to work on that. And I was fortunate enough to work on it and uh, fortunate enough to make it, what, 13 years in the NFL. So I was fortunate enough to be in a couple Super Bowls, go to three or four NFC, AFC championship games through my years. And I believe that was God's plan, you know, to say, this is what it's like. This, this is high expectations. And we talk to our kids, my own kids all the time. Don't be satisfied with mediocrity. That, that's, that's, 70% of the world, 80% of the world, you know, be that other 20%. And I believe those expectations need to stay at that level. And that's what the NFL taught me that first year that, that said, you know what, I got, I got fired. I got fired three times pretty much, but I'm going to still try. I'm going to get up at five o'clock in the morning. I'm going to snap footballs. I'm going to go work at a print shop. I'm going to go substitute teach, whatever it takes to try to get back. And if I didn't, you know what, I did everything I could to try to make it and then give it up to God. My father-in-law passed away uh, right after Phil passed away. He passed away in August, then the following February, my father-in-law passed away. So it'll be three years this coming February. And um, we were thinking about moving closer to home uh, as the kids came. You know, here come Cody in 98, here comes Zach in 2000. So 99, she was pregnant, Mama was pregnant, like, okay. We, so we thought Marietta, we thought maybe Columbus, Huntington. Well, guess what? Coach Belichick comes in and fires me. So I don't have a job. So I'm in between going to the Jets with Coach Parcells, because he was the Jets, or going to Philly with Coach Reed. They didn't say 100%, but they said they would be interested in talking to me. So we had just come home in 99 to try to move closer to home, because my wife's out of PT school now. She, grad she's, she took her boards like seven months pregnant, so God bless you, you know. I mean, Mama's just, she's our, she's our rock too in our family. And um, it's like, okay, we need to move home. Cody came in 98. Kansas City's 12 hours away. Mama and Papa are getting older. Grandma and Grandpa are getting older. We, we, want, we want to see their grandkids. Not, not 12 hours, but, you know, six, five, four, three, two, one. Well, it ended up being 10 minutes. My father-in-law called me up within a day of us going back to Kansas City, driving all the way back to Kansas City, and he says, Michael, you need to come home. I found a farm. I was like, where at? Well, it's... You can throw, not really, but you can throw a rock almost to it, you know? So God put it in our heart. We had a, we had a silent bid, and next thing you know, within two weeks, three weeks of buying that lot, and I don't have a job. I don't have a job. We don't have the money to pay for all of it. We gotta, we gotta borrow money and whatever we gotta do. And I'm like, honey, are you sure? And it was God, it was God. Within 30 days, we sold our house in Kansas City. So God just started putting all that stuff right in our, right around. And um, so we sold, sold the house. Uh, moved to them that off season. Um, then I was with Philadelphia, signed with Philadelphia in 2000. Went up there, came home. My father built our house. What a blessing that is. So just God had that plan that we had to be home. You've asked everybody this. What does it mean to be Appalachian? Um, you know, it, just that country and just knowing we're all polite. We'll all help you if, you if you're broken down alongside the road, whether, whether you take our car at knife point or, or whether you say, hey, thank you. We're going to help you. And I think that's what Appalachia is all about. You know, I, I believe it's that next to kin. And I, and I can't remember that whole movie, but I remember them gathering together. 
when they needed everybody to come together in their bib overalls and all that stuff. And, and maybe they're a little bit out there like we all are, but it, it, it's that, that camaraderie that, that we all need. And just like we said earlier, you know, that foundation. And um, I think God's that Holy Spirit is working on that Appalachia. You know, not saying it's in rural area or suburb areas and inner cities and all that, but it's everywhere. God is everywhere, but um, being proud, being proud to be from Appalachia. Hey, I came from Appalachia and, and um, trying to be the best Appalachian that you can every day.